So Amir Khan comes out and uh tells some truth about the situation around Francis and Ghana. Shout out to Amir Khan. Uh I like Amir Khan. He he takes the biggest challenges that he can take. He try to maximize his potential. I know everybody say he doesn't have the greatest chin, but as far as a heart, you know what I'm saying, he goes out there and try to be the best. Uh, you can't really uh, hurt anybody or fault him for that. That's why his name, like I said, man, once you're done, your resume is what we're going to remember. And uh, Amir Khan got a, uh, a nice little resume. Win or lose, he got a nice resume. But um, he uh, was talking about this Francis Ngannou situation. He's telling a lot of truth about how boxing's on the back foot right now. We kind of we kind of been weakened, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people think that we're a joke right now after that uh at uh, the Fury fight with uh Ngannou. They think that MMA fighters is kind of make boxers look a little weak right now. He said we we're looking a little weak. We need kind of Joshua to go out there and get the KO. And I agree with Amir Khan. A hundred percent. I feel like American is just saying everything out loud that people are scared to say. And they're probably going to say more of what American is saying next week. He's just the first one. Shout out to American. He's probably been saying it. Just got a camera in his face. But um, he obviously knows that boxing took a hit as far as an image with the Tyson situation. And a payday or a situation they thought was going to be just lucrative, it's now put everybody in emergency mode. Now we kind of got to pick up the pieces as far as making everything look better than what it actually is. Now we're asking that Ghana to be Superman. I mean, asking uh, Joshua to be Superman as far as trying to take down the Ghana. You know what I'm saying? But in Ghana right now, he can't. He can't really worry about what the MMA and boxing thing. His mind is on a whole different thing. That's why I say it's a lot of pressure on Joshua because people are saying, oh, man, now in Josh, Josh, over the next couple of weeks, Joshua's going to hear a little bit of whispers. What I've been yelling, they're going to start whispering about, oh, man, what if Ngannou wins this fight? What if he embarrasses another boxer? Now it's about embarrassment. And all this other stuff. See what I'm trying to tell y'all? Like, the stuff starting to creep in, bro. I told people. Like, if you would just have competitive fights, back to back, you wouldn't have to worry about um, a lot of things that's going on as far as in the boxing world. If you had back to back fights, you wouldn't have to worry about who's the best and um, we need to find out this and is this guy qualified. Just fight, make it happen, and you can see what happens. But now, we don't know who's the best. They're trying to convince you that Fury had an off night. And Fury has, still hasn't fought guys his size, really, in his career. So he's been getting over. Joshua, if he don't make it happen, they're going to say he's been getting over. His resume is sketchy, too. He don't got Fury on his resume. His resume is sketchy, too. So he got to make it happen. Amir Khan let it be known, like, man, look, he got to save boxing right now. If he go out there and lay a dud, it's over with. MMA going to have uh, bragging rights forever. It's to a point now where it's boxing versus MMA. Isn't that crazy? This turned into from Joshua and, and Gano just getting in the ring and having a match. To now it's uh, MMA versus boxing and MMA has bragging rights. I don't know. People, I don't think MMA guys is really into that kind of stuff like that, for real, to be honest with you. Because I don't think they was looking at it, looking at it like that when it was coming to the Floyd situation. I think they was more so looking at it from the standpoint of they just wanted to see a guy that they was familiar with win as far as the MMA. But um, in this situation, boxing's on the defense. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, America, we're not going to be embarrassed as far as boxing because we've been putting on competitive fights. 
And the guys that we've been bragging about been actually showing up. And actually putting together hard fights. Not trying to compete with uh, MMA guys for for a belt. But now y'all in a situation now where Ngannou, man, he's embarrassing people right now. It's not really, they trying to really change the story and the narrative. He's embarrassed them. And right now they scared because they're using Joshua to kind of try to shut down the whole cloudy talk around Ngannou as far as him not getting the win, all, all, everything. They trying to shut down all that stuff. They trying to shut down a rematch. They trying to have Ngannou get beat so bad that people say, oh, we don't want to see a Fury rematch. He just got destroyed by this other guy. They're doing a lot of leg work right now. I'm telling you. It's a lot of things going on. They put makeup on a lot of things. But with uh, Ngannou, if he worries about the outside noise, which he's not going to, um, I put little tidbits out there recently, but he has a lot of reasons why he doesn't have to worry about uh, these people the next couple of, uh, these next, these next, this next week and a half. I'm going to put out a prediction probably, uh, what's today, Tuesday? I'm probably try to put one out tomorrow and uh, make it happen. I'm going to do some couple of things, a couple of things with it, but. At the end of the day, man, he has uh, he has everything on his side right now. He, he can't really worry about what these other people are talking about as far as the pressure of this and MMA and boxing. They putting all that on Joshua. Then they're talking about Joshua can get a big fight if he wins this. Then he's saying this is one of his big fights and this is the big fight for him. All right, man. Okay. Let's do it. Let's definitely do it. I'm ready to see it. We definitely going to be live for that one. We need to know. Because y'all been hyping this up. And it's a lot of guarantees I've been hearing. I guarantee this. I guarantee that. All right. Okay, man. We're going to figure out what people know about sports. About combat boxing. Because, look, I'm going to tell you right now. We already seen Ngannou come out one time. So, it ain't like we ain't never seen him in a boxing ring before. So, if you don't, if y'all get surprised this time by certain things that happen, that's definitely on you. I'm going to let you know that now. You get surprised by things like that now, you definitely, <laughs> okay. All right. It's a lot of things I've been hearing lately I just don't like. Definitely don't like. I'm talking about the arrogance behind everything. People acting like Tyson Fury ain't get flatlined. And they just like the arrogance I hear from boxer fans. Like, yeah, man. Uh, I guarantee. Like, what? Oh, man. I can't really jump behind that kind of energy. I don't know about guaranteeing that somebody's going to take a L. That's hard, bro. These days, and then we just seen what we seen with Tyson Fury. Then everybody got all kind of excuses. How close the fight was. and um, How guys ain't in shape. I ain't never heard about no boxer not being in shape is the reason why he lost. Or uh, looked bad in the fight. I'm talking about usually fans will be like, if a dude look bad in the fight, they're just going to say he look bad. I ain't never heard after a fight people say, yeah, man, he wasn't in shape. Y'all remember that? I don't know. When the last time y'all, what fight was that when somebody said, yeah, he wasn't in shape, though? I don't know what fight, man. Y'all got to remind me what fight that was. When somebody said, yeah, man, he... It was because he was he wasn't in shape. I need to find out what fight that was. Because the first one is Francis and Gunnu versus Fury that comes to my mind. After that, I ain't never heard nothing like that. But uh that's all I got though. Like and subscribe.